Hello and welcome to Elliot Designs. Now today we'll be using a program named LT Spice to go and design and simulate transmission line enclosures. Now with transmission line enclosures, they're a bit like a ported box, but instead of a box with a port inside it, the box is a port. This allows us to simulate some of the high frequency output of the port and enable us to try and dampen it so that none of it gets out and ruins our upper frequency response. First of all though is the install because it's quite different to any program you may have installed before. There's a couple of extra steps that you need to take. So what I've just done here is I've selected the 64-bit version of the program since I know I have a 64-bit computer. Now if you're unsure about whether your computer is 64-bit or 32-bit, just pick 32-bit, because it's safe either way. The 64-bit version is just faster for those computers which can run it. Now, that installation process there will take some time, so let's just go to having a look through Spice ETL. Now, this is the add-on for LT Spice, and we'll be installing it to be able to design and simulate transmission line enclosures. As you can see here, these are the different blocks that will be included in the enclosure design process, and you'll be using these throughout. Different damping materials, since you can simulate the different foams and fibers that you can put in. And just click that green button there to download the files that you'll need. Now, you may need a piece of software such as WIMRAR or WinZip to be able to open this file since it is a compressed file. Here I'm using WIMRAR. Okay, so this just tells me the installer is finished, so I'm just opening up the program. Okay, so what I figured out here is the most recent update which I'm installing uh, through the prompt is actually broken, so it caused it to crash. Uh, luckily, it opened straight back up and it was fine, so I just hit no this time. So now what I want to do is I open the files uh, where, where we want the new location to be. So I'm just getting everything in place. And what you'll see here is you can't just click and drag these files over because it's within a zip file. So you need to right click, add files to clipboard and then right click paste. And then you've got all of those new files that you'll need for your transmission line enclosure design and simulation. And then open SpiceTL default. This is the default and you'll be able to change everything from here. So these are the loudspeaker driver properties. And you'll want to change these to open them. You right click. So here I'm just getting the properties for the specific loudspeaker driver I'm using. And those are located as such. Entering the values and then again right click that area and it will open up that prompt to change your values. And do those for all of them. There we go. So uh, line width parameter, we don't need to care about those, uh, but different parameters for foam and fiber are important. So I won't be using foam, I'll be using fiber for all of mine. So I want to copy all of my fiber values over to my foam values. And I know I'll be using a fiber density of 37 kilograms per meter cubed. So I copied that over to. Now you can just click and drag across the area to move across the screen. Offset foam um, is quite literally how it sounds. You've got a bit of foam behind the driver in the line. And what I'm doing here is I'm entering my, my area in centimeters squared. And I know it's 225 since my internal uh, cross-sectional area is 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters because it's a square box. 
and my length in meters is 0 0.15 because that's the minimum distance I need to be able to fit the driver on the baffle. And at the moment I'm fitting no foam in there for this part of the simulation. Again, changing those properties over. Making sure, so at the moment I'm just going to use the length of one meter just for testing purposes and to show you the differences in what those make. And then you hit the little running man in the top left there and that starts running the things. So at the bottom there we have our overall volume, that's what I'm just double clicking on, on there. And as you can see, double clicking has opened that graph up. We want to make sure that for our volumes, they're measured in decibels on the left of the graph. And this is the frequency response. As we can see, there's lots of nulls and peaks generated from the higher frequency responses coming out of that port. And we can also see it's a glad, um, gradual slope off, quite representative of a transmission line enclosure. Now we want to right click that because we want it to be in decibels rather than linear. There we go. And that is representative of the port output, what's coming out of the port end. The green graph that's currently open. Okay, so the blue graph that we've just opened there is the driver output. And as we can see, there's a null where um, where the port takes over. What I've just clicked on there in the bottom left, that is the displacement graph for the driver. And so we want that to be um, linear. So millivolts means millimeters. So 2.2 millimeters is our around our top displacement there. And it all goes across with frequency as the previous graphs do. That green plot is our total response, so that's our driver response and our port response combined. And there I've just selected the drag tool. You want to cover all of the blocks that all of the blocks that you want to move. If you don't cover all of it, it won't select it. And I've moved those out of, out of the way. Components, which have just opened there, you need to switch it over to our files that we put in earlier, which are representative of our transmission line different ends. So here we've got all of the different types. We've got straight, fi straight fiber, straight uh, foam. So I'm going for straight foam since I copied the properties from fiber over to foam anyway, so they should be the same. So that's representative of, representative of just a straight port or a straight section in the box. I then want it to taper down because that's going to be representative of a flare of a port, or at least somewhat representative. And then that's going to be the main portion of the port. Those first three sections just represent the box, hence 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters, since that is my total box area. And then what we'll want here is expanding foam, since that's going to be representative of the opening part of the port flare. So you've got the flare into the port and the flare out of the port. And this is representative of what happens if you have blocks that aren't connected. So you always need to make sure that you either have them connected as such, or that you don't have any out in the open. But first, we want to add another part. We want to add a closed end because not only is this program suitable for open transmission lines, but also closed transmission lines. So something you can do here is click the delete key that opens up the cut and we want to cut that open end away since we don't want any free floating blocks. So as you can see, this is actually representing um, an enclosure, which is what we've designed here. But 
as a closed box. And as you can see, you do get resonances with a closed box. And this can be useful for simulating those resonances within that closed box. Especially if your structure isn't rigid enough. So here we're adding a bit of foam to see, or in this case fibre, to see what its effects will be. And this is also measured in centimetres squared. So here I've put in 225 centimetres squared to essentially cover the whole area. At the moment these properties were left at their defaults of 1 metre, so I'm just changing these about to show you how these change the results on the graphs. I'm adding foam to each of these different port areas here and changing their length as well. As you can see, the graph has totally smoothed out. That's because the foam we've added has absorbed these resonances within the box. And here we're getting rid of the close end. As we're done with this closed box simulation example and we're going to continue with our open ported example, our transmission line. You want to make sure those are lined up properly and then you hit escape to get rid of that component to have it go away. As you can see the actual response of the uh, port and the driver combined hasn't changed much. You'll find this is because the port length is far too long and so it's not actually affecting anything near the resonant frequency. Now to make everything easier we've gone back to the start. We have our system SBL and our open-ended port SBL. So what are we going to do about it? At the moment all of these are disjointed. We start with um, a surface area of 100 centimeters squared go down to 80 then suddenly that jumps to 100 again and go from jumping straight down to 80 and back up to 100 again that's no use so let's at least make these line up first so we want this to be 80 centimeters squared so that this goes from 100 down to 80 stays at 80 for a meter and then opens from 80 to 100 in the length of a meter. Okay, let's see what's happened. What happens now? Okay, nothing much. Now, let's fill this up with foam. Let's say, because the driver also has to sit in this area, so let's say about 200 centimeters squared of that 225 is filled with foam, because it's quite a shallow driver, so there should be plenty of space for the fibre filling. Let's see what that does. Okay, now that's tapered off this much higher end of the response a bit more. Still not much use though. So let's jump to more realistic values. So these tapers, since they're going to be the flares, are going to be fairly short. So I predict those flares need to be about um, 42 millimetres long, which would be 0 0.042 metres. So let's change each of those. 0 0.042, right click, 0 0.042. There we go, a much more reasonable response. Now, as you can see, our peak is far too high. Now, where would that come from? That could come from our surface areas being too large. Yes, that sounds reasonable. So our port, let's make that area um, 31.17. As you can see, I've gone through and experimented and found these ideal values earlier. 31.17 and 31.17. Now those values 
open up to a surface area of 200 and 246 centimeters squared. So let's change that as well. Okay, so most likely all of this mess is coming from somewhere else. So Ah, I've just realised. So I set this, I reset this um, to show you how to go through it all. And what I hadn't realised is these values also reset. So you need to be wary of that when starting up a new project. These values, these projects don't really save. You kind of need to do it all in one go. So let me just go fix that. Okay, so now that those values are properly amended, let's run this graph again. Okay, that's a little more like it. We have a bit more of a low end bump. So now that is where we are actually getting our gain at the moment. It's far too, far too low. It's at 8, 90, 80, 70, well, let's count from the left, 20, 30. It's about 28 hertz. These are just resonant peaks up here, and we definitely don't want those. And you can tell they're resonant peaks from how they interact with the total response forming norms. Now, that tells us we want to make these shorter. And of course that would make sense because we're not going to have a length for one metre for this driver. We want our resonant frequency to be much higher up, closer to our FS, 62.97. Since anywhere below that we're going to have a very high excursion. So what are we going to change those values to? Now, from my calculations, it should be about 0 0.161, far shorter. So let's change that. This can all come together from changing these values until you, you're starting to tend towards the right area. So as you can see here, massive bump. It's gone all the way up to about 92, 93 up here, 92, 93 dB, and that's much more ideal. And as you can see, a much smoother response. That That's totally ideal, in fact. So we've got this nearly filled up with foam. Let's take that foam out to see how that changes things. Massive peaks and dips. That is going to be very noticeable, because our upper crossover is at two, three, four, 500 hertz and that's only going to start dropping off here so having that bit of foam in well bit of fiber is going to make all that difference let's try putting a bit in after the driver now this usually wouldn't make sense because you're going to be dropping off the efficiency a bit that output out of that port's going to drop a bit because it's the energy is being absorbed by the fibers but since this is a much larger area to the port area that we're actually using here um, it shouldn't make too much of a difference so let's try a value of 200 that we've got in here and see what that does so we're at about 93 db here and about hmm about 95 96 up here so let's see how that changes. So you can also drag and zoom in on the things there. So as you can see, the SBL out of the port has dropped a little. You can also use this to zoom to the graphs uh, so that they're fully in shot. Um, and this hasn't dropped much now. You can also see that this has fixed a lot. Now what you don't want to be doing is filling the smaller areas with foam or fibre because that will dramatically decrease the effectiveness of your port. Let's say we were to completely fill this uh, surface area and volume throughout the length. So that's 31.17 centimetres squared. Massive drop, 
look how much lower that is. It's barely even giving a boost anymore. And that's a prime example of where to and where not to place your foam and fibre. Now to go through all of the components. So, you have your 180 degree bend, your 90 degree bend, typically used for turns in the enclosure, turns in the port. You've got your amplifier, your amplifier with a crossover, the closed end as we saw earlier, expanding foam which we've seen, integrated transmission line. Now this is useful um, if you want to go for something that's more simple or it also represents these three components here which can also be useful. But However, typically you'd have a more complicated shape than that. For example, thinner areas give um, allow you to have shorter lengths whilst having the same resonant frequency. You've got your integrated transmission line closed at one end here, because it's open at this end. And you've got in your integrated waveguide where the driver is placed in the centre there. You've got your offset foam, which we've seen there, the open end, which we've also seen. You've got a port, which you can use for vented enclosures, although um, it can be quite complicated trying to represent where that is. It kind of needs to be on the front or rear and not at an angle or at the bottom with this kind of thing. It's a, essentially going into a volume. Then you've got four speakers you can use, all representing the same driver parameters, but you can use up to four speakers in an enclosure. You've got your straight fibre, which I just transfer my values from fibre over to foam for anyway. You've got your straight phone, tapered phone, which we've seen there. A test point, which is this, which all of our testing points come off of to generate our plots on our graph and a volume, so a given space. This could be used for things such as Helmholtz resonators, but that can get quite complicated and very large at low frequencies, so we won't go into that. So if we go over to our amplifier here, we'll see that our voltage output is at 2.83 volts. Now that's representative usually of one watt. However, we have about a four ohm driver here, well, it's 3.3, but we'll call it 4 ohm. And so that's about 2 watts that will be representative of. In the end, I'll be using an amplifier power of about 50 watts. So what we want to do there is do 50 times 3.3. And do the square root of that value. I believe it was 165. Let's just double check that. Yeah, it was square root of 165 and that gives us about 12.85 volts and then we can enter that in there and run it again. Now it's updated our dB values of course not fully representative because we don't have our uh, sensitivity rating in here. However, what it is representative of, if we right click, if we double click our excursion part of our first speaker, which is here, right click this, change it to linear, is our excursion. Now, with this driver, we have a 3.3 millimeter X max. So if we zoom in on this area, we can see we're actually exceeding that. So we have two options. We can either move our um, our resonance of our port up a bit to take load off this area of the driver and lose a bit of low end extension, or we can just lower our amplifier voltage, which I will instead do. So let's try 12 volts. And that will reset the graph, so we zoom in again. 3.1, let's zoom in a bit more because that's not enough vertical resolution. So, yep, that is less than 
less than 3.3, just about. We can also see where our excursion limit is for our x max below our um, resonance where the port is taking over and the drive is taking back into place. So that in our case will be about 59 hertz so we can expect we'll needing to be um, putting a high pass on this to start dropping it before it hits that x max. So it's likely uh, with a steep enough crossover we can get about 60 hertz flat with this driver. If we go back into decibel and back to um, sorry, seeing our full range we've actually got the total SBR here anyway 90, 80, 70, 60 so I wouldn't quite say flat down to 60 hertz but this is the point where we'd need to start dropping off now with a more capable driver with let's say a more capable X Max, you can just let that just completely roll off and what's useful about transmission line enclosures is they have about a 12 dB roll off, much better than a ported enclosure. Not quite as good as our closed box enclosure though. And that is transmission line enclosure design with LT Spice and the add-on Spice ETL. Thank you for watching.